Hi, welcome to the small shed. This Saturday we're mending something I've broken for a change. See you in a minute. Now a couple of weeks ago I managed to break the door handle off the sh inside of the shed when I came in. It's a bit unfortunate because all my tools were out in the car at the time and I couldn't get out through the door, I couldn't get out through the windows because the window catches were on and the Allen key I needed to open the windows was in the car. We managed to get out in the end but it's left me with a, a door handle that's in two pieces. So I'm going to repair that um, and then after that it's only a short repair. I've got a quick tip which has helped me save an awful lot of time over the last few months. Uh, change the way I work normally. It may be of use to you. So we'll start off just taking a look at this uh, door handle and see if we can get a replacement for it. Now unfortunately I couldn't find a similar replacement to that available locally. Best I could do was something that is very similar but it hasn't got the key escutcheon on it. Um, at the moment I've temporarily fitted that to the inside because I don't need the key on the inside anyway. Um, but I decided that it shouldn't be a great problem to be able to, just to swap the mechanisms because they are the same inside. Essentially you've got um, a device that stops it opening any further than that quadrant that it works in and a spring behind that and then there's a circlip on there which needs removing and once I can remove that that should allow the plate to come off allow the spring to undo and then I can just swap it for the original um, and you can just turn these round the other way if you like this one it's one of them is the left hand side, the other one's the right. You can just swap the swing, spring round 180 degrees, swap the plate round 180 degrees and it will all work the same. So we'll start with just taking the circlips off these two and pulling them apart. Now although you can get proper circlip pliers, I, I've got a set in the garage but they're buried in amongst all the car bits and I don't know where they are. So I'm just using some needle nosed pliers which hopefully with the I need to get the end in a, a clamped in a vise reasonably strongly. Um, the one thing I'm missing is a decent hefty vise but I've managed to clamp one onto the bottom tray. Yeah. And then with that held you can spring these apart and hopefully get a screwdriver underneath just to lift and push them up or out of the groove that they're in. That's it, it's got that up. And you can just pull that out. Have its groove. You can see the circlip shape there. That just springs back into the groove when you've put it back together. Plate on the back of the door then, next to be removed. You need a bigger screwdriver than that for that one. see there the the spring is inside the handle there just unwind that and that's free to lift out as well so that's all the parts that there are to it so all I need to do now is swap the new spindle back in and put it back together in the same way Uh, 
There's the other handle that's got the circlip released. Same principle. Prise the keeper plate off it. And unwind the handle. Let the spring out. And that's the handle that's the one I'm trying to use or reuse. So we'll pop that back in the vise, give it some strength, put the backing plate back on, put the spring on, and then wind it up. place, wind it up with that, put the keeper plate back in, so that now I'll just hold it at the moment. <coughs> that now works on that quadrant and works okay with that. Push the whole thing through because it's not quite through yet. That's it. And just get that to seat, make sure that's seated down into the groove all the way around. Just pressing on it. That should then just collapse back into the groove on the back of the spindle and hopefully if I've got it right we've then got the door handle working properly and I can just fit that to the door now and we're back in business Now for what it's worth, the quick tip I've got is worth thinking about if you're like me, totally disorganised um, and have several projects on the go at once. The videos you see don't get made in a week, edited and put out at the end of that week. They go on over a period of many months sometimes. Uh, I've still got some that I started three or four months ago that are still in uh, half finished state. Now what I've tended to do always with any project is to spend quite a lot of time building it in my head effectively, uh, drawing it down on paper, getting all the sizes, thinking about it and over a period of time things change, you refine your ideas and like these are some of the shed drawings that are now getting a bit tired and past it but all the sizes are there measured out, drawn up, and that changed as I evolved the design. Uh, that one I notice hasn't got the sole plate staggered back to step underneath the internal plasterboard finish. Things like that. But what tends to happen is that this, with several projects on the go, I end up with loads and loads of bits of paper. And I can't ever really be sure which is the most current and what I've most recently done anything with. And it got to the point the other day when I was looking for something for the shed uh, and I got 36 pages of paper that, to look through to find the most up-to-date one. Now I could have numbered them, but even then it doesn't tell you how many there are in that series of numbering. So when you see 25, you don't know whether there's a 26 or a 27 or whether 25 is the last thing you did. So what I've done for about the last dozen projects or so when I was down at the Worcester 
resource exchange the other day, they had some small notebooks that were 10 pence each. And what I've done now, they're all stacked underneath the workbench, so I know where to go for them whenever they are. And whenever I start a new project, I start a new book. So there are projects here, books here for projects I haven't started, ones that are finished, like the cake formers, there wasn't much in that one. In fact, there's nothing in that one. But that'll get reused. Katsu, this was when I was working on the Katsu. There's a couple of projects in there I'm working on. Mezzanine floor for men in sheds, it's got all the dimensions that I'm working on. Uh, model railway thing, the aluminium carts, the cyclone, Stoke Prior benches. Now, I've finished the Stoke Prior benches, that's the first few in here. And then beyond that now I'm moving on to a pallet wood car that I'm building for them. So that's coming on that one. Same with the garden swing for the grandchildren, that was done with the book. So that I always knew at any point in time what the most up-to-date situation was because it was the most recent page. And then now that's finished I'm moving on to the next project which is the cover for the studio air conditioner. That's got all my dimensions in it and some of the drawings. So, for what it's worth, I'll leave it with you. Rather than have bits of paper all over the shed, if you're like me and work in a scatterbrained manner, where you have effectively, that's a current project, that's a current project, uh, that's a current project, that's a current project, that's a current project. So I've got two for five projects on the go there at any one time but I can always find whatever I want at any point. Might be worth thinking about. So there we are, I hope that was of use to somebody. Uh, apologies for the noise, the building works or demolition works I should say that the changing the landscape outside the small shed window are still ongoing in a fairly dramatic fashion. Apologies for that noise if it's intruding into the videos, but hopefully next week they will have pretty much got rid of uh, what they're doing. Hope to see you next week. Thank you once again for all the subscribers. We've managed to hit 500 if it's maintained that position this weekend. Sometimes it does go down a bit. It goes up and down all the while as people come and go. But I think we did hit 500 on Thursday so thanks very much indeed to all who subscribed really do appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you next week bye